A new nose might seem like a good idea when you're trying to land more work in Hollywood, until no one recognizes you anymore. From plastic surgery gone wrong to drastic shifts in aesthetic, these actors are proof that even people with faces seen around the world can still fly under the radar. Where you first saw actor Ethan Suppli in the mid-1990s will depend a lot on how old you were at the time. If you were on the younger side, you were introduced to him in his recurring role as Frankie the Enforcer on Boy Meets World. If you had older tastes, then you likely first took notice of Suppli in his small but memorable roles in the Kevin Smith movies, More Rats and Chasing Amy. Either way, he was almost immediately a steady fixture in film and television, and has been ever since. After Suppli wrapped his four seasons as Randy on My Name is Elle, he decided to start focusing more on his health. Health. He spent nearly two years riding bikes for the investment of a full-time job, spending upwards of 48 hours a week on two wheels. At his heaviest, Subli had weighed 530 pounds, but his cycling had trimmed him down to only 9% body fat. Eventually, he started to lift weights and add muscle to his newly thin frame. As Subli told Entertainment Weekly, his physical transformation was only highlighted when he started going out for roles. He recalled, So then when I started looking for work, I found that people were like, Who are you? We don't know you. You're this new person. I've lost a lot of weight and I am focusing now on retaining as much muscle as possible while I continue to lose weight. There is endless debate as to which of the many wrestlers turned actors have had the best screen careers, but there's no denying that Dwayne The Rock Johnson has been the most successful in that regard. He went from being the most electrifying man in sports entertainment to appearing in movies that have grossed over $12.5 billion at the worldwide box office. Even in the days when WWE was still his full-time job, it wasn't difficult to imagine an easy transition to acting, given his ability to enrapture a crowd both in and out of the ring. Though Johnson was already in great physical shape, it wasn't until he was a fair way into his career as an actor that he really started to put on an impressive amount of muscle. These days, just one of his biceps looks almost as big as his entire torso looked back in the Attitude Era of his WWE years. Coupled with his decision to have a permanently shaved head, Johnson looks almost unrecognizable now when compared to his wrestling heyday and even the early years of his acting career. Of course, the minute he says even a few words in his iconic voice, it removes any doubt that he's still very much Dwayne The Rock Johnson. It's impossible not to talk about actors who have seen drastic physical changes over the years without bringing up Mickey Rourke. In the 1980s, Rourke was one of Hollywood's go-to actors when it needed someone who was traditionally handsome but with a slight bad boy edge. Starring opposite Kim Basinger in the boundary-pushing erotic drama Nine and a Half Weeks helped launch him to a whole other level in 1986, one that he unfortunately struggled to maintain due to various issues in his personal life. Rourke was an amateur boxer before he was an actor and decided to give that another shot in 1991. He reportedly made the decision after feeling like he had no respect for himself being an actor. Rourke proved extremely skilled in the ring and actually went undefeated during his eight fights as a professional boxer between 1991 and 1994. But just because you win the match doesn't mean you didn't take a beating. Due to all the injuries to his face from his time as a boxer, Rourke needed facial reconstruction surgery to fix the damage. But as he told the Daily Mail, I went to the wrong guy to put my face back together. Subsequent plastic surgeries followed to try to repair the damage done by his boxing injuries and the botched surgery to correct them, leaving Rourke almost unrecognizable from his time as one of Hollywood's most promising leading men. After Jennifer Grey starred in Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Dirty Dancing back-to-back -back in 1986 and 87, it seemed like she should have had a pick of whatever role she wanted. But despite being one of Hollywood's it girls at the time, Grey became frustrated that the offers weren't flooding in after Dirty Dancing, and she decided to get a nose job. In 1989, Grey underwent her first rhinoplasty, but quickly realized the downside to making such a significant change to her face. As she explained to the mirror, I went into the operating room a celebrity and came out anonymous. It was the nose job from hell. I'll always be this once famous actress nobody recognizes because of a nose job. In terms of my career, it was devastating. Even worse, the initial nose job didn't hold, and Grey eventually had to have another surgery to try and make things right, further changing how she looked. She might not have ever returned to Ferris Bueller and dirty dancing levels of acting success, but Grey did eventually make a comeback in a different venue. She performed in season 11 of Dancing with the Stars, eventually being crowned that season's winner in November 2010. 
While Johnny Depp's first screen credit was in the iconic A Nightmare on Elm Street, it was on TV's 21 Jump Street that he first achieved breakout success. It's hard to imagine the Johnny Depp we know now being a clean-cut character on a network television show and adorning the covers of teen magazines, but that's the exact persona most of the world first saw him adopt. The thing about Depp is that he's known for completely disappearing into his roles. Many of his characters look completely different from one another, and often quite different from Depp himself. But that doesn't change how different Depp looks now compared to when he first started acting. In addition to the normal effects of aging, Depp is better known today for a more relaxed look that includes unkempt hair and a somewhat scraggly goatee. And unless he's at an event that requires formal dress, he is most commonly seen wearing 90s-era grunge attire like flannels, jeans, and knit hats. In other words, he's as opposite as he could possibly be from his 21 Jump Street character Tom Hansen, something that was played to comedic effect when Depp agreed to cameo as a character in the 2012 21 Jump Street film. The bracelets, the rings, the tight pants. It was just so that people would think I'm cool. After playing Laura Palmer's best friend on Twin Peaks and Wayne's ex-girlfriend in Wayne's World, Lara Flynn Boyle quickly became a rising star to watch in the early 1990s. She continued to balance both movie and film roles throughout the decade, though it was her role on legal drama The Practice that brought her the biggest critical acclaim of her career. Sadly, as was far too common among actresses of the era, Boyle was a frequent target of intense tabloid scrutiny. In particular, she was constantly dogged by rumors that she had an eating disorder, owing in part to her petite frame. As she got older, that tabloid scrutiny turned into assumptions that Boyle had gotten plastic surgery, with publications alleging various features of her face resembled those of a person who'd gone under the knife. Boyle, who has always tried to keep a fairly low profile off-screen, has never acknowledged getting any plastic surgeries, though that hasn't stopped article after article from stating that she has. Still, the truth of the matter is that Boyle does look very different today than she did when she was at her most prolific, whatever the reason might be. When Jonah Hill first rose to prominence in comedies like Superbad, Accepted, and Knocked Up, few could have predicted that he'd eventually be a multiple Oscar nominee who would work with filmmakers like Martin Scorsese, Quentin Tarantino, and the Coen brothers. He's definitely had one of the more interesting and surprising careers of anyone from his generation of actors. On top of that, Hill has also probably gone through a more drastic physical change than any of them. While peers like Michael Cera, Seth Rogen, James Franco, and Justin Long all just look like older versions of themselves as compared to their 2000s Day, Hill has seen a much more noticeable evolution in his look. John almost couldn't make it tonight because he had trouble finding a tuxedo that changes sizes every three hours. In addition to his frequent tendency to sport a full beard and mustache these days, Hill has also lost a fair amount of weight, gained muscle, and added tattoos to his leaner look. His hair is also rarely in the more bushy, afro-like form that we most often saw in his early years, with it now sometimes long past his shoulders and other times as short as a buzz cut. If it's been a while since you saw Jonah Hill on screen, we can almost guarantee he's going to look quite a bit different from the last time you saw him. It's tempting to point to the Twilight series as Kristen Stewart's big breakout, but that wouldn't fairly discount her noteworthy turns in major releases like Panic Room and Zathura, a space adventure, not to mention her roles in various indie movies throughout the 2000s. Stewart was far from a newcomer when she accepted the role of Bella Swan, which catapulted her to massive worldwide stardom. In the first phase of her career, up to and through the Twilight era, Stewart had a pretty standard all-American girl vibe to her look and fashion choices, but around the mid-2010s, likely due to being free of her Twilight obligations and the need to maintain the same basic look for an entire franchise, Stewart began to get a lot more creative and interesting in her fashion and style choices. Her previously long, straight hair mostly gave way to various shorter bobs, sometimes bordering on a buzz cut. She also tends to go blonde a lot more often than not. She has definitely come a long way since the Bella Swan days, with both her looks and her career seeming to belong to a completely different person than she used to be. To put it more accurately, she now has the confidence to be the real Kristen Stewart. Renee Zellweger was a consistent presence in film throughout the 1990s and 2000s. You can pick any number of roles as her most iconic, and there wouldn't be a wrong answer. From the titular Bridget Jones franchise, to Dorothy Boyd in Jerry Maguire, to her Oscar-nominated role as Roxy Hart in Chicago, to her Oscar-winning role as Ruby Thews in Cold Mountain, she built quite a filmography. She worked steadily until 2010, when she took a self-imposed hiatus after that year's My Own Love Song. When Zellweger started wading back into the limelight around 2014, various media 
media outlets took note of what was seen as a change in her appearance. Naturally, the immediate assumption was plastic surgery, and Zellweger initially took all the speculation about her appearance and the presumed reasons why she must have felt compelled to go under the knife as a major blow to her ego. However, she eventually decided to see the bright side of all the scrutiny. Reflecting on that period a few years later, she told People magazine, I'm glad folks think I look different. I'm living a different, happy, more fulfilling life, and I'm thrilled that perhaps it shows. Zellweger has chosen to neither confirm nor deny that she had plastic surgery. She's instead content to let people know that no matter what they think about her appearance or her choices, she's comfortable in her own skin and living her best life. Making a film debut in 2012's The Watch, alongside some of the best-known names in comedy at the time, didn't exactly put then-18-year-old Erin Moriarty on the map. It would actually be on TV that the actor finally started earning significant attention, primarily as Audrey Hart in season 1 of True Detective, Hope Schlartman on Jessica Jones, and Starlight aka Annie January in Amazon's The Boys. Despite only just hitting her 30s, Moriarty has already been plagued by accusations of having plastic surgery. After it became a lengthy topic of discussion on the Megan Kelly podcast in early 2024, Moriarty felt the need to address the rumors head-on. She initially took to Instagram to deny that she had undergone any plastic surgery, and had harsh words for Kelly for helping to ignite the rumors to begin with. Not long thereafter, Moriarty decided to quit Instagram entirely over the whole ordeal. As for why she might look different than she did at the beginning of her career, or even just a few years ago, there's nothing to suggest that she isn't just aging and looks a little different heading into her 30s than she did as a teenager and a 20-something. Part of what made the Harry Potter film franchise such a joy to watch is that most of the kids in the cast were played by actual kids, which not only lent to their believability in the first installment, but allowed them to grow alongside their characters as the series continued. This also meant that many of them changed dramatically as the movies went on, and some are borderline unrecognizable in the roles they've taken on since the series wrapped. That's to say nothing of how different they look today as compared to their years at Hogwarts. One of the Harry Potter cast members with the most shocking then versus now comparison is definitely Matthew Lewis, who played Neville Longbottom in all eight films. Why is it always me? Lewis was 12 years old when the first movie was released, and 22 by the end, and he was already bordering on looking like two different people when you compare Sorcerer Stone Neville to Deathly Hollows Part 2 Neville, but that's nothing compared to looking at pictures of Lewis now. Beyond just the expected grown-up features, Lewis barely even looks like he'd be related to his younger self. Even if you grew up watching the Harry Potter movies on constant repeat, don't be surprised if Matthew Lewis walked right past you on the street without you noticing. <laughs> 